Clap sync. Oh, oh, ow. Ah. Whew. Guys, my thumb smashed too many thumbs ups. What's up guys, welcome to another Premiere Pro CC tutorial. I'm your host, Gilly Gill. I've taken some damage today. I kinda was helping put together some shelves and like a piece of metal fell, acting like a scissor and I'm damaged. Damaged goods. <laughs> All that aside guys, today I hope you're ready to learn something new, something a little bit more advanced. We've, we've established a foundation and the building blocks are there. So now we're ready to create some real editors. Today's focus, keyframing. Basically put, keyframing is the change of a clip's parameter over time. That'll make a lot more sense when we jump into Premiere, so let's do just that. We're gonna go ahead and create a new project. I'm gonna call this one keyframing example and we'll put it where we need to go. All this stuff stays the same, you know the drill. Okay, we're inside our default workspace, which is the editing workspace. And I'm not gonna import any clips in here because I'm gonna do something really basic and just use text. Like I said before, we need to create a sequence, so we'll just go down there, select sequence, and 1080p 30 on the DSLR setting. And what we're gonna do is just grab the text tool, go up to the program monitor, and we are just gonna start typing something cool. Okay, now that we have some text on screen, we're gonna zoom into our timeline a bit so that we can see how long that is. We've only got about five seconds of text here. And if you hit spacebar, we're gonna play that back and see that this is just pretty much text on the screen. It doesn't do anything. What kind of interest would that be for our audience? Static text on the screen isn't doing anything for us, so why don't we try and make that move? This is where keyframing comes into play. So let's say we want to take our text and make it grow from a small something that you can barely see to something much bigger to fill the screen. And you'll notice if you click this little arrow to the right of the scale parameter in the effects control panel, we can reset that to 100%. Here's what we'll do. We'll take the playhead and we will start at the very first frame of this clip. And you'll notice right beside scale in the effects control panel, there's a little stopwatch. You click that to enable keyframing on that parameter. So you can see over here just to the right of the effects panel, we have this little diamond just chill in there. That's our first keyframe, set for 100%. We don't want it to start at 100, we're gonna start it at zero. So hit zero and then enter. So currently our text is gone because it is as at a scale of 0%, it's just not there. And what we can do now is go towards the end of our clip with the playhead. We're gonna hit this little diamond right here which is to add or remove a keyframe. And then we're gonna change the parameter to 100. Cool, so now we can see that the text is on the screen. Now if we go back to the beginning and we play that back, you can see that over time, over that six, six seconds and 26 frames, the text will grow from zero to 100. Pretty cool, right? So that's one basic keyframe. Here's a shortcut. If we go back to the beginning, you can see that we have our first keyframe set for zero. As long as we move the playhead even one frame, right arrow, one frame, and we change that, it's going to create another keyframe. You can see if we zoom in, we now have a second keyframe. And if we move the playhead again, one frame, and make a change, it's gonna create another keyframe. So when you're going through your clip and you're making changes to it, you don't always have to hit the add keyframe button. Anytime you're off of a keyframe and you make a change, it will create a new keyframe. So let's do something a little bit more complex. Let's go ahead and delete all these keyframes. So our text is at 100%. Let's do the same thing again and make our text start at zero. We want it to grow to our near final point we're gonna extend it a little bit and then make it kind of bounce. A linear motion from zero to 100 isn't very interesting and it's not very realistic. Think of it like a ball. If you drop a ball on the floor, it isn't just gonna go from your hand to the floor and stop. It's gonna hit the floor and bounce a couple times until it eventually comes to a stop. We're gonna try and simulate something like that. So let's make sure everything's reset. We're gonna start at zero, okay? The first frame of our clip will be our first keyframe at zero. And then we're gonna go to three seconds and we're gonna create our second keyframe 
What we want to do is go past our final value, drop below our final value incrementally until we reach our final resting place. Remember, we're trying to emulate this ball bouncing. If our final target value is 100%, we're going to take this to 115%. We're going to move forward a few frames. We're going to go to 85%, move forward a few frames, make that 110%. You get the idea. So now if we play that back, you'll see it grow, it goes past 100, and bounces. Obviously you wanna play with your timing, and then we can also do some changes called easing. So if you take a look at our keyframes, they're just the diamond shape. That's a linear motion with a constant rate of change from point A to point B. If you right click that keyframe, we can change things about it, such as the linear motion, Bezier, auto bezier, or we can do something called easing in and out. So we want to ease in to our next keyframe, and you'll notice it changes into something like an hourglass. See if you can notice the difference. Okay, so instead of just going from point A to point B in a constant linear motion, we're kind of ramping in to that final value so that it doesn't just reach it all at once. We ease into it. We can drag a bounding box around all these keyframes, right click, change these to Bezier, which again gives them that curve, and then they won't be so abrupt. And let's also take our first keyframe and ease out of that one. Let's play it back and see what we've got. Okay. Now, of course, if you want to zoom into this group of keyframes and space them out a little bit more, you can take any one of these keyframes and change their position in time. Or you can drag a bounding box around all of them and change the whole group. Let's say we don't know where this playhead is going to end up. We don't really know if we're right on top of that keyframe or not. These little arrows beside the, the keyframe button says go to next keyframe or go to previous keyframe. So you'll know you're right on the very next keyframe if you just click those buttons to navigate to and from the keyframes. And that's pretty much the flexibility of keyframing. You can not only do just scale, but you can compound keyframing on so many other elements of this clip. Let's use opacity for one. So let's say by the end of our bouncing, we want this to fade away. So let's say right about here in the middle of the bouncing situation, we're gonna go over to opacity, which already has a stopwatch enabled, and we're gonna set a keyframe. So from the beginning of the clip to this keyframe, it will be at 100%. And then let's go to the very end where it's bouncing. It'll stop there. So let's make another keyframe and make the opacity zero. And now we'll see what happens. So now we've changed the opacity from fully opaque, you can see everything, to dropping to disappear. You can keyframe positions, scale, effects, all sorts of things. Anywhere in the program where you can see a stopwatch, that's where you can keyframe something. So guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, but not too hard or you'll end up like me. Subscribe if you aren't already with notifications on, and I'll see you on the next one.